Okay, we're back again. I've taken the shim out. I've put the two woodruff keys in the crankshaft. Now, why would I do that? Well, the reason is, is if you don't have a key on the front here, and you have the key on the back here, and you get this halfway on, and you're a little bit crooked, how are you going to turn this without being rough and bashing it around? But by putting this front key in, that guides us straight on to the back key, and then hopefully everything just slides on. Now another thing to mention I suppose is that um, on these sprockets there's a thick and a thin side. Um, the thick side on both of mine, even the old one, um, the thick side went to the engine block and the thin side went to the pulley and that's what we've done here with this one as well. Now, um, we'll just pop that on. Oh, there's two keyways in this and they're both timed at different positions. Um, the, the original one only had one keyway, but the new one has two. And I've, I've tried them both ways and I've actually lined them up down through um, where this key here, it pretty well went straight in line with the tooth. Well, on the new ones, it doesn't quite line up exactly the same, which is no biggie. Um, we'll time it all up anyway. Now we should be coming onto that second keyway. And as we come onto it, I'm just checking that it's not kicking and turning out that's going to give us trouble on it. It's good. So that's home. That's nice and firm. So we've got our old timing mark around here, so I might come around, back around this way with you again. There you go, you can see from there okay. And so with our sprocket on, let's check if we uh, where we think we should be. And look, that is good. That five thou made a difference. I would bet that my feeler gauge wouldn't make it down the side at all. Get it over here. Not a chance. And that's an eight thou feeler gauge. We don't need to get any. Um, I can just see no air gap, so I'm, I'm not going to um, pursue that any further. So, let's have a look at a couple of things. We've got the crank sprocket here, can move just a little bit, but we've got it sitting in the middle mark there. You've really got to sort of put a little bit into it to get it moving. And the movement there, if I just line a tooth up to give you a guesstimate, Two millimetres, if that, so it's less than a sixteenth. So I don't think we get too concerned with that. Now, this sprocket. In the book they say to double it up. We're not follow we were following the book. Well we're following it roughly, we would say. So and what they're saying is if we get the sprocket, double it up like that bring it halfway around and make sure it's sitting in sitting in the tooth correctly it should sit in this bottom sprocket correctly and see it doesn't might be easier just to wrap the bloody thing around Lance okay so see that there that's not sitting on the tooth if we pick up the tooth We've got nothing. Now you've got to do this on the top. So we actually need to turn this sprocket. We can't turn this one, it's keyed on. So 
If we turn this sprocket one set of holes, we'll have to disregard these timing marks because they're not going to work for us. If we turn this sprocket 90 degrees, I think we pick up a quarter of a hole. And then if we turn it over, that'll pick us up another quarter of a hole. So, so I hope you can see that. Um, I'll try and... bring you around a little bit further if I can and, and but you can see you can see that this chain is sitting up on top of the sprocket now if we push it it goes back and, and like this this is unacceptable then if we pull it we still can't get it to sit into a sprocket, so we're, that's unacceptable. So what we need to do, and I've only just got this in loosely. You can hear the kookaburras laughing in the background. They're probably wondering, what's that silly bugger doing? So we won't have to tighten the bolts right up for this next one. So this is a pretty ingenious idea the Standard Motor Company had for doing bits and pieces, even though it's a bit of a fiddle. Okay, so if we turn the sprocket 90 degrees, we'll just sit the bolts in here. Oops, come on Lance. Body chains grabbing now. Look, one bolt will be good enough. Oh, look at that. I want it right. <laughs> Bloody shortcuts. Bite you on the ass real quick. Okay, so let's bring the sprocket down. Oh, we can nearly get there. But if we put it in the halfway position, oh, we are so close there. Look, just for interest, look, that would do because when we rock it that way, we're still lined up in the tooth. When we rock it this way, we're a little bit loose on the tooth. So I've just got to check that this is... when we rock it right that way the tooth doesn't lock in but if we come forward it does so look just for the exercise let's flip this and see what difference it makes it may be perfect we may have to go back but that's not a problem I'm learning a bit here too um, it's bloody good fun really isn't it well, you could be down the pub drinking beer and that no you wouldn't want that <laughs> Maybe. I could come with you though, that'd be alright. So let's just turn it straight over. Tighten these bolts up and see what we have again. You've really got to push that cam to get it to move. But anyway, we'll try and get it as close as we can. Now, when the timing chains on and the engine's running 
it's going to be pulling down this way. So if we can have that right in the middle as the chain tightens up, that would be ideal, I suppose. So here we'll have gained a quarter of a tooth, maybe, or I can't remember if it's a quarter or a half, but anyway, we will have gained something. So that's in the middle. We'll drop that chain on there. Look at that. Now, so if this is pulling, that'll probably sit back there. So that there, there's more slack there than there was around the other way when we go on the soft side. So let's turn it 90 and see what we have from this side. There's a lot of adjustment here. Well, we may have to go back to our second to turn it over again, but let's try them all. So hopefully this is all understandable for you. I'll pan out a little bit more again. And we'll go... 90. Put him back on again. This might be the happy medium. Okay, we'll drop the chain on. No, that's looser again. So if we... That's not where we want to be. I think we're better off over the other way, where we were. So let's go there. And we're looking at the tightest position where it drops in the tooth evenly, neatly. So if you remember when we started off, um, we had this timing gear down there and it didn't quite work so we turned it 90 and that seemed to be the best, I believe. So we'll go back there and have a quick look at that. This old girl, bloody purr, won't she? Looking forward to that. That's it. That is the best fit. I can't, if I turn it a little bit, you know, barely get slack in it, but I have to work on that. Yeah, I'll just, yeah. So if that's pulling, that'll be fine. Okay, that's a good thing. I'm happy with that. Now, um, Kelly dog's barking in the background. I'm happy with that. That's as, that's as tight as we can have the chain on this end. So we should be able to pop this little spring off if I get my pliers going here somewhere. Probably pop off and come and hit me in the eye or something. Oh, well, I had to drop something, eh? This is a duplex chain. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the chain off. I'm going to put the split link in. Now, 
the tractor engine goes this way. So I'm going to have it so that the little clip here that I dropped, where are we? The clip. So the natural motion of the engine of the chain forces that on. So I'll pop that off. I'll take the chain off. I'll put the joiner in. We've got this. We know where that has to be now, and I'll try and bring it all in together as a unit already assembled, rather than try and get all the pin and that in. So. I'll get this set it up and I'll come back. Okay, I've got my chain assembled and oh, I'll get back in focus and I've got the, the little U-shaped locking collar so it goes in the direction of rotation. Now, just take a note of where that was, try and get it exactly where you had it. And if we take that there, this fella here, now we might have to pick up a tooth or two just to um, get exactly where we need to be. We haven't turned the cam at all. How's that one? Oh, that looks pretty close. No, it's not quite. Pick up. That's where we need to be. Look how tight that is. Hey, give you a bit of a woody or what? Okay. I've put the lock tab on here, just so we know. There's another thing we have to do here. Um, Probably just not yet, but <laughs> when we go to put these shims back in the front here, we're going to have to pull the keyway from under the crank because they just don't want to go on. That's all right, we can handle that. Now if I get a little screwdriver and jam in on the chain here. Make sure that's nice and firm. That's supposed to be probably 20 foot pounds, something like that. Go to your elbow clicks. Okay, now we'll come in. I've got a rounded off screwdriver, so it's flat one side, rounded the other, so we don't mark things up. So, and we'll come in on this fella too. Whoop, and I knocked the spanner off the back of the tractor. So look, new chain, new sprockets. Look, I'm really happy with that. Um, that has to be timed well. Now this little key down the bottom here, I'll just... Bit of a bump on the back of that, just to just to turn him in the groove. And that gives us a chance to put the original shims back in. And so when we put the crankshaft on, we should be okay. Now, 
I've just dropped that key somewhere, so I'll find that in a moment. Now, this weight, it bolts on there next, and the part number for that, it's a Sparex S42423, and it just has a couple little 7 16th bolts and spring washers, I believe. There's me bolts. My little spring washers are a bit rubbish, so what I might do is just I'll get one started here. Just get him all lined up where we need him. And I'll shoot over to my bolt box and I'll get some new spring washers to put on these. So look, all that happens here, and I won't film any more of this just in this section. Um, we also have an S42421, and that's the little mushroom for the governor. Now that's too tight. Okay. Actually it's just on that edge there. Okay, I'll probably deal with that, just give it a polish. That has to go in and out of there nice and freely. It just has to float in and out with the weight of these, so that needs a polish. I think they make the parts, then sometimes um, the CAD plating puts them oversized, the, the suppliers do that now. I'm just making sure this lock tab's not in the way, but no, it's not, so. But I'll have to polish this up a bit, but I'll tighten all this up, I'll get it ready to put the front cover on, and I'll come back. 